Thank you for joining us on Synthesis Workshop. On today's Research Spotlight episode, we're joined by Riley Roberts. Riley earned his bachelor's in biochemistry at Western Washington University. He subsequently came to Portland State University, where he's currently pursuing his doctorate in the Stewart Group. During the course of his doctoral work, he's also had the chance to do an internship at Merck's Process Chemistry Department in Rahway, New Jersey, during which time he co-authored a very nice organic letters paper on the direct conversion of esters to ketones. And from there, I'll hand it over to you, Riley. Thanks a lot for coming on today. Thank you, Matthew, for that kind introduction. I'm excited to speak with you today about the work we've been doing in the Stir Group, specifically on our latest publication in JAX, where we have developed a method that allows for expedient access to arines from simple arenes. Arines are highly reactive intermediates that can only be produced in situ. These molecules are characterized by a strained triple bond within an aromatic ring, making them extremely powerful electrophiles with a vast potential for synthetic utility. Arines are capable of diverse reactivity, including cycloadditions, formal sigma bond insertions, nucleophilic addition reactions, click type chemistry, and even multi-component couplings. Arines have been used extensively in the synthesis of natural products to quickly build up complexity and to form bonds to adjacent aromatic ring carbons. However, arines are notorious for their difficulty to access. This is a problem that we in the Stir Group strive to remedy. In the modern day, when chemists want to generate an arine, they are typically faced with two options. The first is to use an aryl halide or aryl triflate along with a strong base. This route to arines is appealing because this starting material is very abundant and inexpensive. In the presence of strong bases like lithium amides, aryl halides and aryl triflates generate arines via deprotonation of the orthoproton and subsequent elimination of the halide, which is a valuable synthetic handle. Something that must be considered, however, is that the reaction conditions required for these substrates to generate arines are not tolerant of base-sensitive functional groups, limiting their use cases. The second, and probably the most common method, is to use orthosilyl aryl triflates along with a fluoride source to generate arines. In the presence of fluoride sources such as potassium fluoride, cesium fluoride, or TBAF, these compounds generate arines at room temperature, dramatically increasing their functional group tolerability over base-mediated aryl halide elimination. In contrast to aryl halides, these arine precursors have limited commercial availability, as well as having lengthy syntheses that often require multiple steps of chromatography and alkyl lithium reagents to synthesize. These limitations preclude them from commonplace use in the laboratory. Ideally, an arine could be generated directly from a simple arine via some formal dehydrogenative process, thereby transforming the practicing chemist's existing chemical inventory into a library of available arine precursors. A simple arine formal dehydrogenation would need to occur selectively on a desired aromatic ring, retain the functionality of ring functional groups, and be compatible with electrophilic and acidic functional groups. However, there is a key fundamental challenge that stands in the way of establishing this methodology, and that is the fact that hydrogens behave as electrophuges, that is, they leave without their bonding pair of electrons. So, if we were to accomplish this goal in a literal manner, by simply pulling off two protons from a ring, we would generate an aryl dianion instead of our desired arine. To circumvent this issue, we reasoned that employing some CH functionalization method to regioselectively install a nucleophage onto a ring would render the arine a suitable arine precursor by a base-mediated elimination as long as there is an orthoproton to act as an electrophuge. To accomplish this desired transformation, we need to first choose an appropriate nucleophage that can be installed onto an arine in a highly regioselective manner and is amenable to elimination in the presence of base to generate an arine. Since our research group primarily focuses on iodonium chemistry, we set out to install iodonium onto chlorobenzene using hydroxytosyloxy iodomazetylene. But all efforts to synthesize this corresponding iodonium salt failed, even under forcing conditions. We searched the literature and found that thionethrenation chemistry, particularly thionethrenation of aromatic sp2 carbons, has recently been used to install powerful synthetic linchpins onto arenes. There is even early precedent for the synthesis of arines using aerylthionethrenium perchlorates, although with few examples and being potentially hazardous to handle. Thionethrenium was successfully installed onto chlorobenzene to exclusively yield the triflate salt of the para-isomer. 
It's worth noting that commercially available thianthrin can be easily oxidized to make thianthrin S-oxide in a single step. Furthermore, when this aryl thianthrinium salt was treated with sodium terbutoxide in the presence of furan, the oxobicyclic 4 plus 2 cycloaddition product was observed in 59% yield, setting the stage for optimization. To ensure efficacy of thianthrinium as a leaving group over other nucleophages like dibenzothiophenium or bromine, analogs of 4 chlorothianthrinium triflate were treated with our standard aryl synthesis conditions. It was found that 4 chlorodibenzothiophenium triflate generated the oxobicyclic product, but in lower yields than that of the thianthrinium salt. This and the requirement for longer reaction times to achieve maximum yield and purity of the dibenzothiophenium salt make them less desirable for this method. When treated with our standard conditions, the brominated analog of this series failed to generate any of the oxobicyclic product, demonstrating the superior leaving group ability of thianthrinium over aryl halides. This arine formal dehydrogenation is compatible with aryl halides, forming the arine distal to the halide while preserving their synthetic utility. Arines with 1,4 substitution patterns are well tolerated, generating densely substituted benzenoid products. Highly electron rich arines and arines with multiple halogens are amenable as well. This transformation is also compatible with multiple rings possessing distal electron withdrawing groups, heterocycles, and alkynes. Additionally, Ketones can also be tolerated in this reaction, as is the case with benzophenone. Finally, both steps of this reaction can even be telescoped. To demonstrate this, we have used 2-bromo-1-fluoro-4-methoxybenzene as our prototypical arene. We start by charging the reaction vessel with acetonitrile, thianthrene S-oxide, and 2-bromo-1-fluoro-4-methoxybenzene. This mixture was stirred in an ice bath, for the addition of triflic acid and trifluoroacetic anhydride, resulting in a beautiful deep purple that slowly fades over the course of the reaction. Once the reaction is complete, methanol was slowly added to the reaction mixture before being concentrated under reduced pressure. The resulting oily residue was then tritrated with diethyl ether to afford a white precipitate that is allowed to settle. The ether supernatant is then removed using a pasture pipette. Finally, Toluene, furan, and sodium terbutoxide were then added to the vessel right before being moved to heat. Following this final step, the oxbicyclic product was isolated by a column chromatography in 85% yield. Other aranophiles compatible with this method are NBOC paroles, which undergo 4 plus 2 cycloadditions with arines, nitrones, saturated and heterocycles like azepans and anilines, both of which undergo hydroamination reactions with the arine. These reactions proceed from the simple arine in moderate to good yields. In further demonstrating the functional group compatibility of this method, we use clofibrate to directly compare our formal dehydrogenation with the more common method of arine synthesis that is aryl halide elimination using strong base. For the latter method, clofibrate was first brominated using n-bromosuccinamide and hexafluoroisopropanol to afford the corresponding brominated clofibrate analog in 88% yield after chromatography. The product was then treated with furan and various bases in attempts to generate and observe the oxobicyclic cycloaddition product by a proton NMR of the crude reaction mixture. Of all four bases screened, LDA was found to generate the oxobicyclic product in 19% yield, while lithium HMDS and lithium TMP failed to generate the product in any detectable quantity. All four bases screened produced large quantities of unknown degradation products, further emphasizing the incompatibility of base-sensitive functional groups when aryl halides are used as arine precursors. In attempts to synthesize the same product using our developed formal dehydrogenation, clofibrate was first treated with thianthrination standard conditions to generate the aryl thianthrinium salt in 91% yield without use of chromatography. This salt was then carried forward with modified aryl synthesis conditions to generate the oxobicyclic product in 60% yield and a 55% yield over two steps from clofibrate. Overall, the total reaction time from clofibrate to the furan-trapped aryl product of clofibrate comes to only four hours with only a single step of chromatography. As mentioned prior, orthocyloaryl aryl triflates are common aryl precursors that extrude aryls in the presence of a mild fluoride source. 
While this is extremely useful for generating an arine in the presence of base sensitive substrates, synthesizing these arine precursors are often challenging, and their general lack of commercial availability will often require the user to undertake a relatively time consuming synthesis. To directly compare this method with arine formal dehydrogenation, we set out to synthesize 3,4-dimethoxybenzyne via an ortho trimethylsiloaryltriflate and via formal arine dehydrogenation. Starting from commercially available 1,2-dimethoxyphenol, the corresponding ortho triflate was generated in 28% yield over four steps. The product was then treated with fluoride in a final step to afford the desired oxobicyclic compound in 73% yield with an overall yield of 20% from the phenol. To synthesize the same product via formal dehydrogenation, 1,2-dimethoxybenzene underwent thionthrenation to afford the aryl thionthrenium salt in 85% yield before being treated with sodium terpetoxide to generate the final oxobicyclic product in 74% yield, with an overall yield of 63%. It's important to highlight that synthesizing the oxobicyclic product using this ortho-trimethylsiloaryltriflate required four column purifications, while formal dehydrogenation of 1,2-dimethoxybenzene required only one column purification. While the synthesis of ortho triflates is often telescoped to minimize purification steps, we reason that practicing chemists who are unfamiliar with these reagents will often opt to synthesize them in a stepwise manner to minimize material loss and maximize yield. Thus, this formal dehydrogenation can be a more convenient and accessible method to access arines. Aryl thionthrenium salts have garnered much attention in the recent literature for their ability to be employed as diverse synthetic handles for a variety of organic transformations, specifically forming bonds on the arine ipso to thionthrenium. The ability of aryl thionthrenium salts to generate arines enables a complementary reactivity pathway to establish metal catalyzed cross couplings often used with these salts. Since ring substituents like halides and ethers influence the site of nucleophilic attack on arines, strategic installation of thionthrenium can allow for highly regioselective scene substitution with nitrogen nucleophiles. Using 4 chloroanisole as our prototypical arine, thionthrenium was installed ortho to the methoxy to generate the thionthrenium salt, which was precipitated from the crude reaction mixture and isolated by filtration. This salt was then treated with standard arine synthesis conditions, as well as various nitrogen nucleophiles. Aniline, morpholine, and 3-aminoquinolin reacted with the corresponding arine to yield hydroamination products in moderate to good yields. All products were obtained as a single regioisomer. To summarize, we have developed a formal dehydrogenation of simple arines in two steps. By leveraging the high regioselectivity of aromatic sp2CH thionthrenation, we can produce an efficient arine precursor without the use of chromatography. This method is tolerant of various electrophilic and acidic functional groups, can be telescoped by employing a solvent swap after thionthrenation of the arine, and can even be used for late stage functionalization. Thank you all so much for listening. I want to acknowledge my wonderful lab members as well as the co-authors of this work who are absolutely vital to its completion. Brian Metz, Dr. Sasha Nalova, and my advisor, Dr. Dave Stewart, for his guidance. I also want to thank the NSF, Portland State University, and the Build Exito program for funding this work. Finally, I want to thank you, Matthew, for giving me this great opportunity to discuss my work. If you have any questions or just want to connect, feel free to send me an email or connect with me on Twitter or LinkedIn. I'm always happy to talk chemistry and to bounce around ideas. Thank you all so much. Have a good one. Thank you for tuning in for this Research Spotlight episode, and thank you to Riley for a great talk. If you enjoyed the episode, you can support us by subscribing and telling your peers about this podcast, and feel free to send us any questions or comments you have. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to date, and see you all next time.